G'day, I'm Clive and welcome to CDP Outdoors and welcome back to my backyard. In the last video I did a review of the Ranger BV bag from Valhalla and there was a couple of things that uh, just didn't work and one of them was the poles. So what I've done is I've been and picked up a couple of poles from the local um, outdoor store and they're the, if I remember, they're the Austrail single hikers bivvy uh, spare poles so i've modified them a bit by cutting them down to the right length which i needed for this and i've made another part as well to be able to use them so we'll go through it and i'll show you what i've done the poles i've got these ones in particular because the ends were open and the actual bungee cord is connected at the joints not like I'm somewhere at the end and there's a reason for that and the reason for that is I need to make them shorter to work with the Valhalla bivvy and what I actually used is one of these which is known as a pipe cutter also known as a tube cutter and you can pick them up from anywhere like the 10 Australian dollars going all the way up depending on the quality and the size of them that you want I think this one cost me uh, about 30, yeah, 27, 30 Australian dollars. So it's a pretty decent one. And you can replace the blade in it if it goes blunt. So it's going to last a while. And I do use these. The way I worked out the length of the pole, I did the same with the uh, shoulder end. This is just the foot end one. As I put it through, the actual bivvy sleeve, the pole sleeve on the bottom of the bivvy at the foot end and I just bent it around until it reached level with the ground and that's where I marked it on both sides and then I just cut it with a pole and that's how I got that length. Now the second part to be able to use them poles in the bivvy and the reason I decided to make my own is the ones that they supply they say you have to stick in the ground and to me you could be on the ground where it's solid or it could be too soft for them and they'll just flick out if it's in sand and the actual tabs uh, you tie out or pull out bits on your bivvy bag they're not the strongest so what I made was these I got a bit of one inch strap in which I had laying around I went down to the local outdoor store I've got a couple of these rings with the pins on and these are the pins that are used on the tents and they go into the tent poles to stop the tent poles spinning out so let me show you with the pole I've made so here's a pole for the foot so I put that through the sleeve these I'll show you as I do it, but this would actually go through the two tags at the foot end and that would actually hold the foot end down in place and that just goes in to the end here it's difficult to, it's away from the body So now that holds the pole at the right angle and it's not going to slip anywhere so there's no need to go into the ground and there's no need for any pockets uh, stitched onto the bivvy bag itself. see the cat wants to get involved he loves climbing under these and even inside when I leave it open first I'll put the pole through the actual foot end the sleeve And 
here's the two tags or your tie-up points. So I'm just going to put the strap through these where you normally stake them down. I'm going to put the first one in, this end foot, and then bend this one into place. And there we go, that one's up. And what I have to do now is put a peg through each of the loops and I'm going to attach a bit of bungee here just to hold it up to stop it falling down as I'm using it. There's the first two in, I shall going to stop it pulling when I start on the opposite end. Now I've got some 5mm bungee cord which I'm just going to tie to that and bring it down to the ground here. And the reason I'm using bungee, so if I'm moving in the night and that does pull, it's going to allow the bungee to pull so it's not going to rip the actual uh, tag here. I'm just going <laughs> to... The cat's going crazy up that end. Hey, get out of there. Get out, you pest. looking at me as if say, what have I done wrong? I'm just uh, going to use just a basic overhand knot here. And that's the foot end done. And as you can see, we've been pegged out in the bungee. So if that does pull, the bungee is just going to bring it back in place and hold it there. And now I'll do the same the shoulder end or your head ends. Look, baby cricket there. Take it through. No, I haven't tried this end yet with the loops over the pole so we'll do it now and let's see if it works out and then we'll get the shoulder end one which is a bit wider than the foot end So it looks like it's going to work with the actual tags or the pole going through the tags. So I'm just going to grab a couple of pigs. What do I do with them? Over there. Take the head end. And the cat's going to have a look again. <laughs> Trying to get underneath. 
Now, you can see it has lifted it up a bit. And we don't have the full support along the whole hammock. It's not lifting all, well, not all the way. It is lifting it higher than it would normally be. And that's because the pole is falling forward. So what I'm thinking of doing is again attaching the bungee cord to here on either side and picking it out up at the head end. And what I've attempted to do is do this with one piece. Now actually I will use two to bring it out and away the bungee cord. I'm sure that's not that's going to slide down the pole, so I might attach to there get a longer piece of cord. Now, what I might do is do it double length and just use the one piece. Right there. Mind yourself, cat. to place the overhand knot. That's not going to slip anywhere. And I'll do the same on either end. The reason why I wanted to put the bungee cord on the poles, or so I could still throw this back over the top. But I just saw that didn't work. So I'm having to use the center tag now, which is actually pulling the bivy up down the far end, or along the whole length, a couple of inches higher. So. Digging for that one. She's trying to bring that wider. It's going to make it more difficult to get in. Okay, let's show you from this angle. You can see along here how this is lifted up most of the way. And if that drops down, the bungee cord is going to pull it back up. What I really could have done with this sort of thing is another tag on either side here just to hold it out. So I'm not going to uh, attempt to stitch through that to add one on, I'll most likely ruin it. And the temperature at the moment here is 34 degrees centigrade. So it's nice and warm, but still, let's have a look. You can already see, let's bring it back, how high that's bringing it up off your face. So if you don't mind shuffling down a little bit, the whole of this bug net's not going to be touching at all. And like I said, there's no tags, so we can't roll these up and pin it up there. The only thing we can do is either leave it hanging or sew it over. We've got a good bit of room all the way down, so it's going to allow a lot more airflow 
and hopefully reduce the condensation. Uh, let's give it a go getting in, even though it is really hot. <laughs> It already feels better getting in there and not having to kick the material out of the way. Now this bit by my belly is touching. It's just, just touching my thighs but the rest of it isn't touching at the moment let's see how this bug net works that, <laughs> that top cover just fallen but the bug net is away from my face yeah it, that's the only downfall is not having anywhere to roll this up and then tie it out of the way because that actually sat like that quite nice until the, bug, uh, the top fell on it and pushed it down so it held the bug net off my face so I don't know if there's a way I can do it what I might look at is See if I can get a, a stick on patch here. See if we can make it stick to the glue without ruining the waterproof. And I'll have a tag on it and I'll just be able to tie that up onto that. And I'll do similar with this. So I can tag that up. So when I'm using the, the poles, I'm gonna to have to do that. But I'm not using the poles, I can just throw that over. I can just do that. So the other way I think I might be able to do it is put the bungee through these loops here and pull them pull it down. That might work. I won't give it much support, but I'll give it a little. Let's try that now. Okay, I've got the original one. Which I'm gonna put through that tag. Try a basic knot in there. Just make a loop in this end. I put that through this one. See what what happens. Uh, it doesn't look like it's going to work. We'll still keep giving it a go. Now it worked a bit. It's the easiest way of putting it. And now that can go over the top and when the bug net's done up it's going to be off the face so that's a bonus that's one thing that we've sorted to be honest it could actually do with two tags at the top, not just one in the middle and that would hold that down nice it would be a lot better if you had the two yeah
Now one thing that could help is when I've got the tarp or the, the uh, hoochie over the top, your basher, I could just pull that up either end to the actual ridge line holding the basher. So that would hold that up. And that'd do the same here. So I think the only time we're gonna have any issue is when we don't have a basher. But still, so you can see that one's attached to there. The pole going through down to the ring and the pin. I think I'll leave some bungee on here to run up to the tarp or the basher or ridge line. And the same this side, go down to the ring and pin through the tag there with the bungee attached to it, which is holding it up. And you can see here, let's get out your light. I put the strap through the tie-up points and that's actually holding the bottom of the bivvy down near enough level with the floor. And that bungee's gone up to that tie-out point. Which like I said, I could use that there, going up to the basher or the tarp. Uh, yep. And like I said, it's not completely up off the ground, but it's about, on average, about seven, eight inches with the maximum with the ridge line bits at about 12 inches. So that's just gonna make it slightly easier getting in. But then you're gonna have your, your mat and your sleeping bag. But still it saves the whole thing laying flat on top of you. Okay, I hope that's given you an idea of a way to use your poles. And what you can do with this, the uh, Ranger bivy bag from Valhalla. I do like this bag, like I said, but originally the way it was, I'd only give it 8 out of 10. So I, I couldn't recommend it unless you're happy with that sort of thing. But there is a couple of things that they could do. Like I said, they could add two hoops at the top, or loops at the top to allow for you to peg it out either side. So that would actually hold the head flat and give it the whole thing a lot more support. Instead of having a single tag in the middle at the top, they could put one here on either side. So you've got three on the top. So you wouldn't have to struggle with a pole. You could just put a stick through and tie it up and hold your uh, bivy up. Uh, and like I said, actually on the side here, they could have put one on either side, which would have enabled you just to have some bungee cord or something or peg it straight down just to help hold it in place and hold it flat. So, oh, and the, the loops. They could do with a couple of toggles or something so you can actually roll the actual main rain sheet off your face and just pick, uh, pin it up out of the way. Or even have two. Let's see, if they had the um, tie out points at the top or a couple of loops, we could actually have one on either end and just roll it up and that'll hold it higher. And the same on the bug net. Just have a small toggle underneath to take up and around through. That'd make it probably give us close to a nine and a half then. But this time of year now in Australia, I think this is going to be too warm for me because tonight it's uh, the coldest it's going to get is 18 degrees centigrade. And at the moment it's about 34 degrees centigrade. So you're not going to really feel cold even without a basher. And then you'll probably only have your sleeping bag thrown over the top of you or one of the thinnest bags going. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and it's given you some good ideas. And if it's your first time to my channel, please go down below and click on that subscribe button, the notification bell next to it, and also click that like button. And if you are already a subscriber, again, I thank you very much. So until next time, get out there, have some fun and take care.